presence of the Lord is surely in this place. pastors that are going to be part of the revival. We thought we'd only be here for a half hour, maybe an hour at the most. Two and a half hours later, we were still praying for God and praying. Praying for the lost. Praying for healing. Praying for deliverance. But what really touched my heart was when one individual prayed, Lord, take everything out of me that is not like you. It was so powerful that by the time we got home after spending some time with one of the pastors and his wife, it was almost 9 o'clock at night, just sharing about the love of God and what God is doing in their church and what God is doing here at Love and Grace Fellowship. After we left the restaurant last night, received a call from my daughter who happened to be working at Bob Evans and said a couple was sitting in seat number three like I knew what seat number three was and they asked where was your church and what time was service by the time she called they had already left but they are regulars there at the church I mean at Bob Evans so I'm expecting to see some new folks walking in and I'm trusting God and believing by faith yes. by faith that we're not going to have enough chairs in the sanctuary yes. to hold all that that are coming in yes. and that was one of the I wouldn't call it, I would say prophesied. But one of the pastor's wife said that the anointing is in this place. And that the Holy Spirit is in here. Like I said, we've already had church already. I do want to thank each and every one of you for praying for my mom. We first got there it was almost like touch and go to whether she was going to have to go to the hospital or not but by the time we left with all the prayers going up for her and the love that she knows that comes from love and grace fellowship and the prayers that she knows that comes from here Mom will tell you she's doing good even if she was on her last breath. <laughs> but she also said, I, I know where I'm going. If God's will is going to take me home, don't cry for me. Because I'll be in a better place than you're at, son. <laughs> so we're trusting God that God's going to keep her here. I told her she can't leave till she's at least 100. Amen. 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 And I thank you for praying for us, for us we traveled. Praise God. If I had, was to have a title, and I do have a title of this message, is this. And this is a question. This is a question. Is God good? 
Mm. This is the question. Is God good? Turn with me. Just one scripture, Romans chapter 8. Very familiar scripture. Verse 28. And the Bible states as follows. And we know that all things work together for the good to them that love God. Yes. To them who are called according to to his purpose. Now I plan on breaking this scripture down today and give you some insight as I researched. We get excited about this scripture for all things work together for the good that love us. But we also get excited about some silly things too. We get excited when a group of multi-million dollar athletes who don't know us and care less about us, but we get loyal to them and we adore them when they win a game that we go actually go crazy. Joe Small invites us to a party where people stand around screaming because the music is ear piercing and we are thrilled. We got a dual exhaust four barrel carb and neon on the other the carriage of our pinto, and we are delirious. <laughs> we can't wait for summer school, summer, and there's no school, so we have time to be bored. <laughs> we can't wait for retirement and no work, so we'll have time to be bored. We get a computer with 30 gigs, 300 RAMs, Pentium 3 processors with a 21 inch screen, and every other gizmo that, that you could want, which by the way would be ancient in two years. <laughs> and we go nuts. We're ecstatic because we finally got through on the 1 800 number of who wants to be a millionaire? Yes, we get excited over silly things. In contrast, we have some real reasons to celebrate and to be excited about. Number one, God loves us. Number two, he has forgiven our sins. Number three, Jesus Christ is alive and he is here. But God's grace Hallelujah. By God's grace, mm -hmm. we are saved. Yes, sir. Heaven is going to be great, mm -hmm. and it will never end. Mm -hmm. Never end. Mm -hmm. But times in our life, we will go through peaks and valleys. Our songs, our prayers, I've given thanks to God and glory to Him, and He deserves it the uh, praise and we already have what we would call an altar call but at the conclusion of this service there's a time where I want you to give a testimony to remember God's goodness in your situation remind me about that Amen. <laughs> there is a verse that is such a great promise and a verse that is very appropriate as we celebrate today. Permit me to give you some background information about Romans leading to it. Number one, Paul wrote this letter to the Christians living in Rome around 55 AD. Now being able to look back in time, we realize that the followers of Christ have already faced difficult times and it would not get easier. The main concept of Romans is about the importance of righteousness, even in the face of opposition, oppression, that Christians are to be righteous. We're to be righteous. What does righteous mean? Righteous means to do right. 
behave right, think right, and act right. Yes. God is righteous. God is righteous. Romans 1.17 says, For in the gospel of righteousness from God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith from first to last, just as it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. There is nothing about God that is not righteous. Yet on the other hand, Paul clearly states that man is not righteous. My God. Romans 3, verse 10. Romans 3, verse 23. As it is written, there is no one righteous, not even one. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Since we cannot become righteous on our own account, we must receive our righteousness through God. In Romans chapter 4, verse 5, and, and, and Romans chapter 4, 7, and 8. However, to the man who does not work but trusts God, who is justified, the wickedness of faith is credited as righteousness. Blessed are those whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man who says sins, excuse me, <clears throat> blessed is the man whose, wow, sin the Lord will never count against him. The byproduct, of course, will be overflowing celebration, peace, and joy. Where we were once dead to sin, now we're alive in Jesus. How can I be? Once we were dead to sin, now we're alive in Jesus. Amen. How? Amen. Romans 6, chapter 4, verse, and verse 5. We are therefore buried in him through baptism unto death in order that Jesus, as Christ, was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, who we to many new life. We have been united with him. This is his death we will certainly also be united with him in his resurrection. Amen. Paul then speaks of the battle between two natures, sin or death, mm -hmm. righteousness or life. Mm -hmm. Transparently, he says, I will struggle. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be easy yeah. all the time. And then, of course, comes chapter 8. <laughs> One of the most powerful, encouraging, affirming, and loving chapter in the entire Bible. Amen. In the midst of persecution and possible defeat, there is victory. Yes. In fact, the chapter begins and ends with a victory cry. In Romans chapter 8, verse 1 and verse 39 Therefore, there is now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Neither height, nor death, nor anything else in creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that in Christ Jesus our Lord. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Now, in the midst of this chapter, we come to the verse 28, <laughs> which reads, and we know that all things God works for good of those who love him, mm. who have been called according to his purpose. To his purpose. Amen. God states a promise with a condition to be followed. Amen. God states a promise yes. with a condition to be followed. Yes. If we carry out the condition then God's promise is guaranteed. Yeah. I'm going to have save that promise for last. Let's look at the conditions first. Amen. And as many other biblical for, uh, verses, we find a bilateral covenant. Number one, in verse 28, it says, those who love him. Many years ago, I attended the Promise Keepers Rally in St. Petersburg. Uh, several years ago, it was about, 
about 50,000 men in the stadium, Tropical Field. They were all supposedly Christian men. Before the session began, as men were seated almost without fail, one enthusiastic group would start singing the chant, We love Jesus. Yes, we do. We love Jesus. Scream, how about you? To which another group would echo back and it would continue. Then there was an overly competitive group that would scream, We love Jesus. Yes, we do. We love Jesus more than you. Our guys that were with us from our church. Being a conservative lot, wouldn't sing or shout. They just turned to each other and mumbled, Yes, we love Jesus. Mm. Yes. Amen. We love Jesus. Yeah. You see, we don't have to be boastful. People can see by your actions yes. how yeah. you live your life. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Whether you love Jesus or not. Amen. Those other groups were, how about you? We love Jesus more than you. <laughs> and our group just looked at each other. Yes. Very quietly. Yes, we love Jesus. We all know that we are commanded to love God. In Matthew chapter 22, verses 37 through 38, Jesus replied, Love the Lord with your God with all your heart, and excuse me, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. But does the command mean that we are doing it? Does the screaming that we love Jesus prove our love for God? How do we really know? And how do we know we really love him? This is a teaching today. Amen. How do we know? The Bible states uh, some simple test. Jesus said in John 14, 15, if you love me, you will obey what I command. Mm -hmm. Obedience is number one. Mm -hmm. It's an act of love. Yeah. It's agape. Mm -hmm. It's an agape love. Amen. You can't expect God or anyone else to believe the sincerity of your love if you constantly disobey his commands. Mm -hmm. In 1 John 2.15 do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Wow. 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 <laughs> we got to be obedient. Yes. To the will of God. To his word. Live righteous. Mm -hmm. Number two. I'm divided. Mm -hmm. Exodus says that God He's jealous. He's a jealous God. He doesn't want to share you with the world. For God knows that you can only serve one master. Amen. Trying to love God and the world just will not work. Amen. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 20, if anyone says, I love God, yet he hates his brother, He's a liar. Yeah. For anyone who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. Mm -hmm. You can't be undivided. Amen. Divided. We got to love God more than we love the world. Mm -hmm. We got to love God more than we love our spouse. Mm -hmm. We got to love God more than we love our children, our father, our mother. Mm -hmm. Even your pastors, you got to love God more than you love us. Amen. God's got to come first. Yeah. 
if he doesn't come first, he's jealous. You know how we get when somebody tries to talk to our wife, man? Uh-huh. We get jealous. Yeah. We ready to fight. Yeah. <laughs> Tighten them right on up. <laughs> <laughs> so can you just imagine the love that God has for us? Mm-hmm. And how jealous he is that we love the things of the world more than him so number one was obedience number two is undivided number three consistency love the creator and his creation not just brother means everyone agape right behavior do what's right these are three tests to know if we really love God. If you're doing these things, then you have to fulfill the first part of the covenant. Now, to the next part. Those who have been called according to his purpose. Amen. What does that mean? Amen. It is not a call to salvation. Mm-hmm. It's to those who have already responded to God by accepting Jesus, his son. Mm-hmm. It's a call like in 2 Timothy 1.9, who has saved us and called us to holy life. Mm-hmm. We've got to live holy. Yeah. It's living a righteous life, which is a shining an example for all to see. It's doing his will day in and day out. Now, when these two conditions are met, there is a great promise that follows, a promise that because it is from God, will happen. It says, and here it says, God works for the good. It brings encouragement and assurance even amidst of difficulty. First, what does this verse not say? Everybody got Romans chapter 8? Verses 28. What does this verse not say? It doesn't say that if we love God and are called according to this person, a purpose, that everything that happens in our lives will be good. Right, it doesn't say that. Remember Joseph, hated, sold as a slave, accused, in prison, yet he was faithful to God and became the second most powerful man in the world. When his brothers thought he would he, they, he would be killed and re, they thought they would be killed in revenge, Joseph said in Genesis chapter fifty, verse twenty, "You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good, to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives." Mm-hmm. Take Paul, the writer of this book. He persecuted the church, and because of that persecution, the church scattered everywhere, mm-hmm. running for their lives. Mm-hmm. And doing so, they took the gospel to the entire world. What seemed to be calamity, uh, calamity served only for good by planting churches in hundreds of new places. Mm-hmm. Here he was persecuting the, the Jews, the, those who were saved, the Christians. And they had to run for their life. Mm. And they had to go find a new place to live. Mm. And when they found a new place to live, away from Paul, they began churches all over the world that was at that time. And look how the church grew. Now we don't know all of Joseph's thoughts while he was being carried away into slavery during the unjust thought imprisonment. Hmm, good. We don't know all of Paul's thoughts while being stoned, beaten, and shipwrecked. But we do know that as they reflected back, they both realized that everything, even the bad, God can cause good to come from it. Mm, Hallelujah. Amen. Think of this. If God calls everything that happened to Christians to be good, what will be the end result? Mm. 
Mm. Compensation is based on selfishness. Mm -hmm. Be Christians because what I get. Mm. Not grow strong because we never face any difficulties. Mm -hmm. Not trust God. Mm. No desire or longing for heaven when you have Utopia here. Mm. No, not everything that happens is good. But also remember that God doesn't orchestrate suffering. Yeah. In fact, Jesus died to remove the sting of sin and death. Mm -hmm. Now, there are, are reasons why bad things happen to people. Sometimes they happen because we bring them on ourselves mm -hmm. by sin. Mm -hmm. Many times it's just because we are sinful, a fallen world, and not being exempt from bad things. They come. The Bible says it rains on what? The just, and, just the and the unjust alike. And the unjust. Yet it's the faithful Christian who, the one who knows the heart of God that can truly have confidence in his verse, that good will come. Mm -hmm. Where there is love and trust, then the believer can know that every, even in a bad situation, God will, because of his great love for us, it's going to be good. Instead of God overruling grace, corporations, and all things for his people, good even those things which are at times are distressing, perplexing, and hard to bear. Let me tell you this. When Paul used these words, we know, we know mm -hmm. at the beginning of this verse, he's speaking as the one who experienced it himself, one who's seen the promise to his own life, he's not pre speaking out of ignorance. Paul endured hardship mm -hmm. for the furtherance of the gospel. Mm -hmm. Oh my. Yeah. He went through trials, disagreeable trials, where that means by which the power of Christ rested upon him. Paul says, I've done that, been there, done that. As I was preparing this message, I especially I worked on this point, my mind full of individuals and families mm. who are in the midst of a storm. Mm. People who are earnestly searching for the good. This verse would be one of the most difficult for you because you haven't completely completely the journey yet. Mm -hmm. But God's word is always true. Mm -hmm. His promise still remains. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank you. So trust God, be faithful to him. Amen. Be faithful in the good times and the bad times. The good time will come. God has promised it. Take healing. Take love. Let me say this. My dad was a very strong man. An Italian, full-blooded Italian who grew up Catholic. Only went to church on Christmas and funerals mm. who thought being born again was a cult mm. and against the Catholic and against the uh, Catholic Church. Mm. There was times when he would ask me questions. Why? Aren't you going to a Catholic church? Why? You go crazy at this born again experience. Why? My daddy came down with cancer, lung cancer. My brother Ralph and I, we drove down from, well, he was living in South Carolina. I drove from Florida to South Carolina to pick up my brother. We went up to New Jersey to see my dad. 
at that time we didn't know it was cancer we were just told that he was wouldn't get out of his bed that he was depressed and my, if you know my father my father was a happy good lucky guy that sang played his guitar and was always at the racetrack was always gambling always doing something that you know to keep himself busy and we get up there my dad's in his bed Barely talking to us, don't want no, don't want to bother with anyone. Somehow, my brother and I seen this and we went over to his doctor, which we knew since we were little children. And the doctor told us that all he had was emphysema. That there was really nothing really wrong with your dad, he's just depressed. I said, Doc, if I take my dad to Florida just to get him out of the house, would that help him? He said, yes. So the doctor calls my father on the phone. Hey, Joe, how you doing? You out of your depression yet? I, just, I couldn't hear what my dad was saying. And he said, Hey, man, why don't you just take a trip? My dad didn't know my brother and I were sitting right across from the doctor in the doctor's office. And all I heard, all of a sudden, I heard my dad screaming. You can hear it now. Now you can hear it because he's talking about you, SOB. My sons were just here and they left to go to Florida. And we started chuckling and laughing after he hung up the phone and we drove back to my dad's house and went upstairs and our brother said, oh, fuck dad, we forgot something, so we had to come back. And my father said, what'd you forget? We said, you, you're coming with us. <laughs> <laughs> we took my dad down to Florida, took him to my house and we were taking care of him and then we got a doctor's appointment for him to find out. He didn't have emphysema, he had lung cancer. Fourth stage with all kind of tumors and mm. everything that you could imagine what he was going through. Oh. And we just loved on him, took care of him, ministered to him. I take him to the doctor's office. One day, and he's sitting up, you know, that little thing that you sit on in the doctor's office, and I'm sitting on a chair, and he said, come here, son. I rolled my chair up to him, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, he said, I want what you have. He said, you're always happy. You treated me so well when I was here, even though I made fun of you, because you, you were a Christian. I want what you have. Praise God. Mm -hmm. And he accepted Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. Amen. 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 Why did I say that? Oh, by the way, he confessed to me what he did for a living. I'll share that all for the record. <laughs> but... We serve a loving God. Amen. He accepted Jesus Christ, but he would not have done that if he didn't have cancer. Mm -hmm. If he didn't go through what he was going through. And if, if he still was the same man, that strong man, I, in my mind, I doubt if he would ever have accepted Jesus as his Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. God took a bad thing and turned it around for good yeah. to the point where my father, after he accepted Jesus, laying in his bed, he cried out to me, Joey, come here, Joey, come here. And I came in the room and he said, he said to me, I've seen this long tunnel, beautiful white tunnel. 
and your brother and sister was at the end of the tunnel telling me, it's not time, Daddy, go back. Stay near. It's not time. My brother and sister both passed, one at 15, one at 29. Mm -hmm. At the end of that tunnel, he said, seen them. Daddy, we're not ready for you yet. Go back. Mm -hmm. My daddy, all of a sudden, the cancer went in remission. And he lived another nine months doing everything, going to church. Went and bought a Cadillac just to ride around the Cadillac where he couldn't even get up before. Mm. He lived another nine months in church every Sunday. My God. Worshiping God. Mm. Listen, good things could happen out of bad yes. situations. Yes. Mm. For those of you, if any of you have been battling cancer, cancer is so limited. It cannot cripple love. Yeah. It cannot corrode faith. It cannot eat away peace. It cannot destroy confidence. It cannot kill friendships. It cannot shut out memories. Right. Cancer, it cannot silence courage. It cannot invade the soul. It cannot reduce eternal life. It cannot quench the spirit. It cannot, be, it cannot lessen the power of the resurrection. Listen, God is good. God is good. If you remember Charles Spurgeon, what a powerful man of God. He took a vacation on an isolated spot in England because nightingales lived there. To his great disappointment, however, it started to rain just as he arrived. The weather turned cold and Spurgeon's field, the purpose of his trip had been spoiled. But he sat by the window anyway, even in the midst of a storm. He suddenly heard a delightful melody. A nightingale perched on a branch outside. The only light was dim, the lamp burning at the entrance of the hotel. The nightingale, obviously oblivious to the rain and cold that was exalted in a tiny bit of light. Spurgeon wrote his experience. I do not expect to listen to anything so sweet and thrill them again until I hear the angels sing in glory. The God of that nightingale is the same lover and savior mm. I serve. In spite of darkness, in spite of a storm, in spite of thorns, he always provides some rays of light gives us a song in the night. God is good. Mm -hmm. Let us live lives that qualify us as Romans 828 states. If you need the goodness of God in your life, mm -hmm. you can have it today. The Bible tells us don't work for salvation that Christ has already done the work for us. But we must accept it on God's terms. He asks us to believe with all our heart that Jesus is God's Son. He's asked us to change from the living self-based lives to living selfish lives. That requires not only a change of heart, but a change of mind that leads to the right behavior. If anyone's here today and haven't been baptized in water, we would love for you to see one of the staff at the service so we can schedule a baptism. If there's anyone here today who has not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, 
by the evidence of speaking in tongues. And you so desire to receive that gift. The altar will be open for you to come. I'm a pastor who don't believe in that we don't have to start speaking in tongues in front of you and telling you to say this and say that. It's got to come directly from the throne of God. And if you want to demonstrate your love for God and the life that he's calling you to live, I want you to stand to your feet. Each and every one of you, I want you to stand to your feet, everyone in this sanctuary right now. I want you to just demonstrate your love for God and the life that lives I want you just to just you and God in any way that God has led you to do I want you to demonstrate your love for God whether it's just staying there silent with your head bowed whether it's just you just raising your hands and giving him praise. Whatever it is, I want you to experience his promise of goodness, even in the face of despair. It takes a lot of faith. Ask yourself the question. Is God good? And if he's good, and he's been good to you even in times of trials and tribulation, even times of, the, of storms, and you've been faithful, not like the men at the promise keepers, I want you just to give him a shout of praise that comes from deep within. That you're not trying to show off and show out, but it's a sincere praise. It's a sincere love for God. A sincere love for Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if you do, just give him a shout of praise. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, God. Oh, Father. Thank you, Lord. Like I said, this is more of a teaching than Hallelujah. a preaching. Hallelujah. I tried to break down that verse as best I could. Hallelujah. To know even that all things are going to work for the good. Yes. Hallelujah. For those who love One more time, if you have a love for God, give him a shout. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah! 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 Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Sovereign God, everlasting Father. Hallelujah! 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 Thank you, God. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Then you said you'll add all those 
those things, but first we gotta seek after your kingdom. Yes, Lord. We gotta live righteous. Hallelujah. Oh God, we thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank, thank you, Lord. you. Hallelujah. Even in the good and the bad. Thank you, Lord. You still love us. Even when we turn the back our backs on you. Thank you, Father. You still love us. Thank you, Father. That you even make a way when we turn our back on you for somehow to send someone in our life. To bring us back to where we're supposed to be. Yes, God. And we thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you for these poor folks that are here today in the sanctuary. Thank you, Father. We thank you for those who are listening on Facebook. Each and every one. God, we YouTube thank you. YouTube and Instagram. We thank you, Father. For those of you who are on YouTube, Instagram, and uh, Facebook. Yes. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, whether you're going through good times or bad times, know that Jesus loves you. Yes. Know that God loves you in spite of you. Hallelujah. All you got to do is confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord. Yes. That he died on the cross, was buried, and rose again on the third day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You just got to repent of your sins. Repent and ask God to forgive you. Yes. yes. You do that, you'll be saved. Hallelujah. Just like my daddy did it at the doctor's office. Hallelujah. He lived a life. That was not pleasing to you, but he gave his life to you. And I thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yes, God. If there's anyone here who wants to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, by the evidence of speaking in tongues, if you don't have that gift, the altar's open and it's just between you and God. Hallelujah. If you want to receive it. to be baptized and emerge of water. Let one of the staff know and build a range of it. Yes. Father. Thank you, Father. We thank you for your word. Yes. yes. We thank you that you showed up today. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. We thank you for your presence. Yes. And Father, we're believing by faith. That you will send the increase in of individuals walking through that door. Yes, Lord. That we would love them. Please bring them in. We would encourage them. Yes. That we would be there for them because you're there for them. Yes. Thank you, Lord God, for your promise. Thank you. That all things will work together for our good. So, Father, the question was, is God good? Yes, he is. Hallelujah. God is good. Yes, he is. God is good. Hallelujah. As I stated earlier, if you have a testimony that you like to share, not something that happened 20, 30, 40 years ago. <laughs> but if you have a testimony that you want to share about the goodness of God, this is your opportunity. Amen. Amen. Is Amen. there one? Anyone have a testimony about the goodness of God? Hallelujah. No one. Pastor Sean. Yes, I do. Oh, look at it, Brother Brady. Praise 
Let's go.